Good morning everyone and welcome to Gaming for Immersion where we play games slow and thematically. So quick status update on the channel. I'm still working on the best mods for Battlefield strategy but there are a couple that are still in the process of being updated that I want to include but I don't want to recommend them yet in case something unexpected turns out to be a problem. So I'm going to hold off on that for the time being, but hopefully I'll have it out soon. And in the meantime, I decided to use some of my testing time to try out some overhaul mods that I've had on my list for a long time. The first one that I'm really pleased to showcase here is for the very much unloved, very much maligned Demons of Chaos faction. That's right, the guy so often referred to as Daniel and this will be the one and only time you will hear me use that name because I find it very unimmersive and not at all a name that fits my conception of what this faction is or at least what this faction should be. And that's because the Demons of Chaos are a very interesting, very thematic faction that also has sadly underperformed in Vanilla Warhammer 3. It is a unique campaign but overall, it's just kind of felt a bit meh, especially in terms of the Legendary Lord's power creep relative to other Legendary Lords. It seems to me that the God Slayer should be a real terror that makes the mortal world shake in terror. I mean, can you imagine being the God Slayer as he re-enters the ravaged, conquered city of Kislev? or into the rich cities of Marienburg and Altdorf in the Empire? Or what about the God Slayer in Lothurn after having laid waste to the rest of Ulthuan? Speaking of which, all that is giving me some ideas for a campaign, but I don't want to digress too far. Anyway, it may be hard to imagine all this in vanilla, but thankfully we have a gorgeous mod that I've had my eye on for a long time and finally have had time to try it out. And of course, the mod that I'm talking about is the God Slayer Overhaul by Mortrow. And what this does is it makes for a unique campaign in a good way. The Demon Prince definitely feels better, more competitive with other legendary lords, has enough tricks up his sleeve to allow many different ways to approach the campaign, and is versatile enough with different specializations to provide good replayability. In short, this mod will turn you into that aforementioned terror that makes mortals the whole world over quiver in fear if you can survive the first few turns. More on that in a minute. So let's talk about the changes this mod makes. First thing is it gives you a horde mechanic, but only for the legendary lord himself. This mechanic gives you the freedom to rampage anywhere in the world, especially when you add in the ability to travel throughout the world using rifts, which I'll get into a little bit more in a minute. The Horde uses the Souls currency for some of its leveling, which makes for some tough choices when deciding what kind of reward to take from battles. Souls and money on one hand, or one of the many different kinds of glory, they're all valuable and that kind of trade-off makes for a more interesting campaign. The buildings you can build in your Horde army can also add up quickly to some really powerful effects. It's only your Legendary Lord's army that will receive them, so the God Slayer himself is definitely going to feel like the center of your empire wherever he is, and I think that's the way it ought to feel. Another thing that the mod does is it reworks equipment. The way the Demon Prince has always worked is instead of traditional equipping of magic items and using your skill tree to add power and abilities to your lord, the Demon Prince uses the equipment system where both power and available abilities are tied to which pieces of gear you have equipped. So let's take a look at what this mod does. Here is what the old equipment panel looked like. And here it is in the overhaul, densely packed with a lot of choices. I'm just going to take a moment here to show a few examples. One quick note that I'll point out is some of them are still lacking pop-up text. It's a minor issue, but hopefully something the author will be able to add in eventually. The stats and effects on the gear is reworked, rebalanced, 
and in some cases reskinned. So there are both functional and cosmetic changes to the system. I'm not going to go too deep into the numerous choices because much of the fun in a mod like this is discovering those choices for yourself. Next thing I want to talk about that this mod adds are the unholy manifestations. This is a completely new mechanic added by the overhaul. There are four choices, just like there are with the different demon factions, and these seem to build up uses on their own over time. Plus, you can add more uses by spending souls. I'll go through these very quickly. The first is a very powerful army buff. The next one is a strong casualty replenishment for you and a whatever the opposite of replenishment is for the enemy. The third one is really interesting because this is what allows you to create rifts in whichever province the army you target is in, which allows you to traverse all over the map. And as I said, it kind of complements that horde mechanic that we talked about previously. And then finally, the fourth manifestation here is army damage on the campaign map. And here's an example of it. It's quite strong, as you can see here. Forbidden. Next thing that the mod does is it makes for a reworked skill tree. Here's the old skill tree in vanilla. And here it is in the overhaul mod. I'll show just a few examples here. As you can see, there are a lot of the same basic skills, plus a whole lot more added in. During the campaign I played, I went with a Chaos Undivided focus on the first playthrough, but I can already see playing the campaign again to try out focusing on one of the Mana Gods. Another thing that the mod does is it makes some changes to diplomacy, and in particular, lowering relations with the Warriors of Chaos, so it generates some extra friction. You can expect to be going to war with them more often. One change in the settlements is that the main settlement building now allows you to recruit Chaos Undivided units. You can still recruit Monogod units from the military buildings, and what this means is that you can recruit basic units right away and focus your first few buildings on infrastructure, which is going to be pretty important because it's a challenging campaign. And let's get into that just a little bit. So, yeah, um, you start without a settlement and your very first target is only a minor settlement. Your starting enemy is quite strong. Now, this enemy is a minor Zinch faction. It is at war with Epidemius also, but for better or worse, you're in between the two of them. And the first major settlement over here is actually pretty tough to take. So, yeah, it's a really challenging start at the beginning, and it gets a little bit harder even after that. Epidemius will probably declare war on you as soon as this minor Zinch faction is destroyed. And then Malice Darkblade will declare war on you as soon as Epidemius is destroyed. And then also Malachi is likely to declare war on you as soon as he can. So yeah, you've got lots of enemies from the very beginning and many of them, particularly Malice, is going to be stronger than you are, at least at the start. However, if you survive that far, then the campaign really opens up and you'll feel quite strong. And one thing that you will have to help yourself out early on is unlocking lots and lots of regiments of renown. And I relied very heavily on those, particularly when I ended up going to war with Malice. So how does the Demon Prince stack up with other legendary lords? Well, I'll show a couple of examples of him in action. This is an example of my level 18 Godslayer in battle with level 20 Malice Darkblade. His army was slightly more powerful than mine, 
But even with the advantages that a human player has over the AI, this turned out to be a pretty even fight until my front line got into his back line and made pretty short work of them. The two lords fought fairly evenly for a while until I burned Malice down with the help of some spellcasters. It feels like the Godslayer can hold his own without being overpowered, at least from what I've experienced in the early and mid game or so. Here's another battle where I used him to draw fire from Kislev while the rest of my army charged forward. That turned out to be a bad idea. He's obviously quite vulnerable to missile fire even at higher levels. Now I could have mitigated that by equipping a shield, but of course I wasn't smart enough to plan that far ahead. And then this, I hesitated showing this, but here we are conquering Yuri's former home Kislev. This was a good feeling, for the moment at least, because the campaign was still very far from over, and I had ticked off so many factions by this point that I had my hands full with something like four wars going. So, let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of the mod. From my playthrough, there were a lot more pros than there were cons. I would say some of the pros of this, the horde mechanic, it does add an additional level of complexity to your campaign, gives you a lot more flexibility, all of which I consider to be a good thing. It does provide some very powerful bonuses once you build up enough souls to be able to build up some of the buildings in that. The unholy manifestations really add quite a lot to the game. They are quite powerful. And they're a good way to use some of your souls, I should say, to have to kind of balance out the currency between spending them on boosting your horde buildings versus spending souls on these unholy manifestations. The equipment, of course, is something that is a big step up from vanilla. And another real pro is that the mod author seems to be very active and responsive. I identified a couple of very minor issues and he had them fixed right away. Some of the flaws in the mod, well, like I said, there's really not that many. I mentioned that there are some pop-ups that have some empty text. Not really that big of a deal, doesn't seem to affect the functionality at all. I think it's just a cosmetic thing. Some of the horde bonuses may actually feel a little bit overpowered. I have basically just gotten into the end game on this campaign, so I already feel quite powerful. I'm a little concerned that it might get to be a little bit too easy, but anyway, that is something that is going to be very subjective, obviously, depending on how you feel about that. And one other thing that I might have liked to have seen is that there's no chaos undivided recruitment in your horde and you're limited in some of the units that you can recruit through the settlements. Basically, you can get the warriors of chaos units like the marauders specific to the different mono gods, but you can't seem to recruit the chaos undivided, the regular versions of them. These are all, I think, pretty minor issues. I wouldn't even call them issues. They're just maybe things that I would have liked to have seen possibly done a little bit differently, but like I said, it's all very subjective. So overall, I, uh, I highly recommend this. I think that it adds a whole lot of additional complexity in a good way to the Godslayer faction. He certainly felt a lot more, uh, let's say, comparable relative to other legendary lords, certainly compared to the last time that I played him in vanilla. And I think the Rift system and the Horde system work together to give you a whole lot of flexibility in terms of how you want to take your campaign. So anyway, have any of you tried this mod? If so, please uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of it. If you haven't, I would encourage you to do so. It is a very unique and very thematic faction, and it's a real shame that it doesn't play a little bit better than it does in Vanilla Warhammer. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that. But as always, thank you so much for watching and listening. Give this one a try if you can. Let me know what you think. And I will see you all in the next video.